No, well, I, I notice we still have Mercury in the moon on this list. Can't we just, I mean, clearly they don't have water. We can just kind of shove them off. Well, you'd think with no atmosphere, they would not have any water. But in fact, they, um, evidence that there is water in the polar regions of, mm. of both Mercury and the moon. Okay. Now, how did it get there? I mean, the moon has been pretty thoroughly baked. Yep. And the basic idea is that you've got one very baked moon and the same for Mercury, but it's being hit by comets every now and then. Okay. And comets, as we've just talked about, are full of water. Yep. Now, on Earth, when it hits something, it will cause a lot of damage to that particular area, but not be spread around. But on the moon, because there's no atmosphere, when a comet hits, it's going to uh, blow uh, bits of comet and bits of moon out. Now, we and, know yep. we're talking about the moon rocks. We saw that when there was a big meteorite impact, it leaves droplets all over the moon. That's right. And so the idea is if, if it was something that contained water, like a comet that hit it the moon... It would leave debris all over the moon. And this ice normally would land somewhere hot and evaporate the next daytime. But remember, the polar regions of the moon, yep. which we're flying into here, are the coldest place in the solar system, colder than Pluto. Exactly, that's right. So while most of the moon water can't survive, any small bits of ice that got blown off from a comet impact... I mean, if you get lucky, yeah. a comet actually landed in the polar regions. Then great. But more likely it hit somewhere else, but then blew stuff off. And if it happens enough times, you build up enough ice, and now you have ice that can not just melt or burn off, it actually just stays there because it's cold enough. That's right. And there are missions that go over that look at, for example, neutrons from a solar wind bouncing off. Yep. And if a neutron hits hydrogen, it loses most of its energy because it's hitting something with the same sort of mass. Yep. And so if you see very low energy neutrons bouncing off to your spacecraft, that tells you it's bounced off hydrogen. Yep. And that hydrogen is probably in the form of water. It can't look in the form of gas. Yep. And we do see these slow neutrons bouncing off the polar craters. Yep. So it does look like in the perpetual shadow polar craters of both Moon and Mercury, there does seem to be a bit of ice, probably mixed in with the rock. Yep. It's not actually a glacier or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we really know these things are perpetual shadows. It's really hard to look in them with exactly. space probes. And this is where, so here are some of these polar craters, and this is where um, NASA's current yes. return to the moon program, Artemis, is planning to go. That's right. They think the most interesting place on the moon is, in this case, they're looking at a crater near the South Pole. And so the plan is sometime in the next 10 years to build a base there and to get astronauts wandering around exploring it. And there's a lot of benefits to landing in this South Pole region, right? Yeah, so first of all, having water and not just to drink, uh, but more importantly, you can break it up to get oxygen. Yep. Um, and you can liberate the hydrogen to make rocket fuel to yep. then help you get back. So it allows you to live off the land and be self-sufficient. Okay. I mean, the moon has all the other minerals you want. It's yeah. the hydrogen and the oxygen. Which is the key part here. And yeah. this is something we explore a bit in the space section. That's right. So if you're going to build a colony, this is the place to do it, or at least mine this and ship it somewhere else. Um, it's also because you can never see the sun from there, um, protects you from a lot of the solar radiation. That's the uh, problem. Yeah, yeah, if you're going yeah. to be elsewhere, on the moon, you're going to need to bury yourself because and the Earth are protected both by our atmosphere and by the magnetic fields. These don't protect you on the moon. Yep. So you're so, essentially just bombarded by radiation. It's okay for a short time in a spacesuit, but if a, if a solar storm came through, if a solar storm had come through and the Apollo astronauts were out there, they would all die from radiation sickness. They didn't know this at the time. Yeah. So you're going to have to have some sort of refuge. Now, in the polar craters, you're safe because the walls of the crater will protect you from the radiation. But if you're going to be anywhere else, you probably better shovel some dirt like over the top of your base. Bunkering down. Yeah. So, colonizing the moon or Mercury, I mean... Possible? Yep. I mean, if you're going to the polar regions, getting power is going to be hard. You can't communicate directly to the Earth, but you probably build a relay up on some nearby peak and a bunch of solar cells up there that can catch the sunlight. Yeah. You see in this image, there's lots of vertical solar cells to catch the sunlight coming in across the poles. So it's doable. Um, I'm not sure how appealing it's going to be, though. I mean, it's not a nice, necessarily, existence, right? I mean... It's hard, it's rough, you're perpetually in the shadow. You're, you're, yes, you're living off the land, but it's not pleasant living off the land. Yes, I mean, it'd be nice to you know, be able to walk across the surface occasionally, but you're going to spend most of your life underground, yeah. and under quite a lot of ground, typically. Um, and you, why not just you build some more mines on Earth and put people down there? Yeah, um, it's a lot easier. It's an awful lot easier. Um, so, yes, possible, easy, not so sure. I mean, I think there has to be a damn good reason to leave Earth to make me want to move to the moon. I mean, it'd be lovely as a vacation. Yep. Maybe it can be a tourist resort. Um, you know, this could be the lights for a tourist city where people come to 
go and goggle up the preserved space where Apollo 11 landed or, or as from we a suitable distance. So. Or as, as we talk about in the space course, using it to get to other places. But long-term living as a, this is where we've set up shop, doesn't seem it's to possible. be possible. Right. I mean, if you definitely don't want to be on Earth because something has gone completely wrong on Earth, then maybe it's a good place. I guess it just depends on how bad it is, that's right.